So video is without a doubt the future of media. Pretty much everyone and their moms is hiring people to shoot videos for their businesses, for their personal brands, for their blogs, or for their family gatherings. And starting a production company can be a pretty scary endeavor because of all of the expenses that you have to cover before even getting started. And I've noticed that this holds a lot of beginners up because they become very fixated on what type of camera they're supposed to own, pretty much to the point where they don't get started or they make a really dumb purchasing decision and it sets them back a lot more than it pushes them forward and in my opinion you could even start doing this without any sort of equipment and in this video today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys what is in my opinion the first few things that you should be doing when starting a production company I know what you're thinking. You came to this video because you wanted to learn how to start a production company and I'm over here telling you that you should go intern for one. Let me explain. The industry is tough, like very tough. Clients are hard to come by, they're very cheap, and they typically can't tell the difference between good and bad work. And if you intern for a production company or you intern for somebody that's been doing it way longer than you, it's gonna speed up your learning curve dramatically. And it's gonna push you way ahead of all of the people that are starting out and are just teaching themselves. Film making and video is very subjective and when you teach yourself you're going to be adapting your style based off of your own personal tastes and just your own experience of doing it but to be honest it's going to be shit like I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's gonna be shit. I was shit when I first started out. Your favorite filmmaker was shit when he first started out. You are going to be shit when you first started out. That's just how it goes. And working with somebody that has been doing it for a long time is gonna help you get over that learning curve and help you be shit for not as long. We develop a bias that our work is pretty good because all of the non-video people that we show our work to, which let's be honest, if you're starting out, that's probably your whole circle. When we show the work to them, they think it looks amazing and that you're going to be the next Steven Spielberg. But to be honest, when non-video people are watching your work, all they're really looking at is that it, the picture quality is a lot better than the average thing that they typically see. Their perspective is going to be good picture quality plus blurry background equals Hollywood. But if you show that same work to someone who's been doing it way longer than you, they are going to tear it apart and they're going to tell you how shitty it is because like I said before, when you first start out, you are shit. But that's okay because when you're showing your work to somebody who's more experienced than you, they're gonna help point out all of the bad things about your work that you can't actually see yourself. And as long as you're willing to work hard and learn, pretty much anyone would be willing to take you under their wing. And don't just work for one production company either. Work for multiple, because freelancing is very inconsistent. And it's important that you develop a few good relationships with different people, that way you can create a consistent flow of work. And everyone has their own way of doing things. Some production companies do it very well, and some production companies do it very bad. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are exposed to both of them, because it's just as important to understand what not to do as it is to understand what to do. And it's gonna help you develop a better understanding of what videos look good and what videos look bad. And when you're not working on those jobs with those production companies, take the knowledge that you learn from them and apply it to your own business. Doing that, you're automatically gonna be light years ahead of all the people that are trying to do it on their own. And of course, make it known to them that you're trying to do your own thing too. It's pretty common knowledge in the industry that we all work on a gig to gig basis and that when we're not working with them, we also have to create our own source of work. Being upfront and honest about this can help you uh, gain respect with them and also keep you from being stuck as their assistant. In my opinion, no, save your money. Pretty much everyone that I know that went to film school say that it wasn't worth it. And they all also have a ton of school debt. And from what they told me, pretty much everything that is taught at film school can be learned just by binge watching YouTube videos for a few days. And YouTube is typically going to be a lot more up to date than film school is going to be, minus the cost. And if you intern for a production company, a lot of the things that you learn, you can probably learn within a couple months instead of a couple years when you go to film school. And you don't have to pay for it. And in some cases, you might even get paid to learn some of it. And if you don't go to film school, you'll be saving a lot of money. And that money can be invested into equipment, into courses, or into your own passion projects. School debt can be pretty unforgiving, so I would just save yourself the hassle. No one actually gives a shit if you have a film school degree anyway. It's gonna be your work ethic, your attitude, and your skills that gets you hired. 
So in order to get any sort of traction with a production company, you need to have a portfolio and you need to be working with people who are very likely to refer you to others. In my opinion, even now, the best marketing team that you have is going to be the clients that refer you. So unless you've created your own personal projects, you're not gonna have a portfolio. And if you don't have a portfolio, the only people that are gonna hire you are the people that you offer free work to, or if it's like your uncle or something. This may come as a surprise to you, but you have an Instagram, and Instagram at this stage is gonna be your best friend. It's not the most professional thing, and I wouldn't recommend using it as your main portfolio, but when you're first starting out, it's important to keep your expenses low, so to me, it would be an exception. Cold DM as many people as you can, offering them free video services. And the best people, in my opinion, to cold DM are gonna be the people that don't have a lot of traction with their own business yet. So you'll be working with people on a similar skill level to you. You could even work out a trade deal with them. And it doesn't matter who you hit up. It's gonna be a matter of your own preference. It could be fitness companies, startup companies, models, musicians, wannabe Gary V's. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they all need videos and you're there to supply it for them. Ideally, volunteer for somebody that you would be excited to shoot for because the enthusiasm is gonna come out in your work. They want to build up their online brands, but they don't have the budgets to hire professionals. So that's where you come in. And because they're not paying you, then it's on them if you screw up, which let's be honest, you will. But that's okay because what's most important about this process is that you're learning how to work with clients and you're learning the disciplines of producing a video for them. And if they love your work, then start charging them because there's gonna be people that will take advantage of this free opportunity to get videos. But that's okay too because it's gonna help you develop a better sense of the people that are bullshitters versus the people that are actually good people. And it's an unwritten rule in the business world World that if they refer you to somebody, they don't mention to them that you did it for them for free. That way you have more control over the pricing that you are charging for that other person. And this is a good way to start getting the referral ball rolling. And if they don't like your work, then just move on because again, they weren't paying you, so their expectations shouldn't be that high. If you want your business to grow as healthily as it can, then it's important that all of the money that you make, you reinvest it into courses and equipment. And if possible, I would recommend not paying yourself too much in the first year or two. This is why I've previously mentioned that you work for a production company on the side, or even a day job doesn't hurt. There's no shame in that. Courses is gonna give you a much higher ROI than equipment is going to. And the reason why I say this is because equipment comes out so frequently that the value of it, it very quickly goes down. This is 100% the case with camera bodies, not so much with everything else. So don't fixate over the camera that you're using. Using, you'll honestly be fine with a sub thousand dollar camera and to be honest most people can't tell the difference between a ten thousand dollar camera and an iPhone 11 and there's some instances where you could even get away with just buying a gimbal for your iPhone it sounds crazy but I've seen it plenty of times prioritize a zoom lens over your fancy pants prime lens that shoots at 1.8 because to be honest clients do not give a shit about your blurry background if you miss an important shot because you couldn't zoom in and always 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 prioritize good lighting and good audio. Lighting makes your work look more cinematic, not your editing transition pack and not your LUT pack. And audio makes it so that it's less cringy to listen to. Bad image quality is always excusable when the audio sounds good. And if you had very good image quality but the audio sounded bad, it's very likely that people are gonna click off of your video. If you had good lighting and good audio but a decent camera, it's gonna automatically make you look a lot better than the person that has a high-end camera but has no understanding of lighting and audio and buying courses is going to give you a much higher ROI than any piece of equipment is going to because it's going to teach you how to get the most out of the equipment that you already own which is going to separate you from the person who only buys the latest and greatest equipment but not so much into understanding how to use it better those people are going to be the people that are producing the same average quality of work but on higher end equipment understanding lighting audio, camera, and editing on a much deeper level is going to help you know how to detail your work in the same way that a pro would know how to do it. And it's going to allow you to work a ton of magic on even the most basic gear. And it's also gotten me out of a lot of situations where I really fucked up on something. So there was one time where I was filming an interview for a client 
and the interview that we we're doing we we're interviewing a guest who was a philanthropist who had exposed a sweatshop in a foreign country for child trafficking not the best time to fuck up on something. Basically what ended up happening was the audio recorder that I was using, it got busted somehow, and I wasn't able to plug one of the mics in, so as a result, I only had one mic to use. I never sharded my pants so quickly in my life. So what I ended up doing is I stayed calm, and then when the guest showed up and the client showed up, I just said, hey, there's a little technical issue with the mic, I'm just gonna have you guys sit closer to each other, trying to stay calm, make it look like I had everything under control, even though underneath I was just completely freaking out and I recorded the audio with the single mic that I had and it sounded pretty shitty but salvageable and this was also a podcasting mic so not the best kind of mic to record two people with and what I did is as soon as I got home I threw that audio into Adobe Audition and I cleaned it up as much as possible and tried to get it as close to normal as I can possibly get it and then once I was done I uploaded it I sent that to the client and it must have worked because he just told me good job and had I not bought a $600 audio course, I would have been pretty screwed and wouldn't have known what to do. Editing, in my opinion, is gonna be the main thing that separates you from others because you can have the most successful shoot with the most high-end equipment, but if the edit puts people to sleep, then it's gonna have been a waste of time. Editing the videos that you shoot is gonna teach you a lot about how to properly shoot the footage in the future because you are gonna see all the things that you fucked up on. And if someone else is editing that footage for you, then you're not gonna have the opportunity to see all of the mistakes that you've been making. Understanding editing helps you with the creative direction of your shoe. It teaches you how to direct things in a way that makes editing easier and it also expands the creative possibilities of your footage. Editing can either make your client go, yeah that was pretty cool, or holy shit. Editing is what makes a joke funny, it's what makes someone cry, it's what helps a product get sold, and it's also what makes your client pull out their wallet and pay you extra money for, which in my case is five dollars. The emotional impact of your editing is what keeps people engaged in the videos that you make. Nobody likes slideshow type of editing, so make sure that you put a lot of time into understanding this. To be honest, I would much rather put build a good team to be the last tip in this video, but building a good team isn't exactly the easiest thing to do in six months, so I'm gonna say be a one-man band, but honestly, I think it's equally as important. When you first start out, you're not gonna be getting high enough budgets that make it practical to hire crew all the time, and you're also gonna be getting hired on projects where you're forced to work by yourself. You need to be prepared for these situations because they will happen. And yes, I understand that it's important to specialize in one thing, Thing, but that's not always how the world works and understanding everything and by everything I mean producing a video lighting shooting and recording sound of a video and editing it properly and doing it efficiently is gonna take you a very long way someone who is very capable of doing all of these things is someone that a producer knows is invaluable these are the people that from my experience will always be given the highest priority when someone is looking to hire a shooter for a job and if you lack an understanding in at least one of these things you're out understanding everything is very important because you're placing more control of a production into your own hands because if one of these things goes wrong and you're not familiar with that thing then you're gonna be scrambling around and freaking out because you don't understand how to solve that sort of problem and it's gonna give your client the impression that you don't know what you're doing and being the person that understands how to do these things and knows how to problem solve whenever problems for those things come up which let's be honest it will it will make the client a lot more comfortable with you and it will make them feel very confident in their hiring decision and that is what will keep you working